Education Center, EDC in short, of XLRI six and a half years back. And the sixth batch is now pursuing its study. And these people, they are different from the other students of the other programs of XLRI. Because all of them, you know, come here because they have a fire in the belly. They want to be entrepreneurs. And they all have very interesting ideas. Some of them having, uh, are having nebulous ideas. Some of them have zeroed in on what they will really do. And here what happens, because all these 60 odd students, they are potential entrepreneurs. They are, I always say that you may be learning less from the faculty during the six months of your program, but you must make it a point to learn more from your peers. Because all their batchmates are potential entrepreneurs. Some of them are already entrepreneurs. So therefore, you know, that is the kind of program which we envisage under this PGPCM. They learn from the, you know, peers and they also start networking from day one. And uh, they, they start working on a project. And this project, we say, should be different from the research projects which BM, HRN, GMP or the doctoral students, you know, pursue. Because these are, these are academically rigorous but operationally may not be relevant. But their projects, you know, we intend that these projects should be operationally relevant so that they can use these projects as blueprint of action. They can start their ventures in the area in which they are, you know, formulating the projects. And they are given the opportunity of being mentored uh, by any uh, faculty member they choose. It's just like doctoral program. We have some doctoral students here also. I can see Vivek here. So now, like in the doctoral program, the choice of the guide rests with the you know student. Here also, the students are given the freedom to choose their mentor from out of the faculty that we have here. They can go through the profile, find out which faculty member has the competence and proficiency in the area in which you know they would like to uh, do their projects. Now, this is a very important part of the you know program, and you know I'm very happy that most of the students of the PGPCEM they have come here because they are sure that they will benefit from these five wonderful entrepreneurs. I am very sorry to announce that another, you know, uh, participant in this uh, speaker session was Kumar Ankit and we couldn't make it because he had met with an unfortunate, you know, accident day before yesterday. So, but then, you know, I am grateful to all of them and sometimes I say, you know, they are like stars in the sky and the e, e cell uh, boys and girls they have worked very hard to make it uh, uh, to, 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 to ensure that these five stars are brought down from the sky to the floor of XLRI. I welcome them heartily and I look forward to hearing them. And feel free to ask them any questions you have in your mind and which you think you know they will be able to enlighten on. Thank you very much. Ravi has been involved in success stories of many ventures. His passion derives from joining startups with innovative products and services at business plan stage and scale them to the next level. He has been instrumental in launching these new ventures as the initial core team member. Zangi.com, Javong.com, New Air, Startup Communications, Banking Infra Solutions, and Computational Research Laboratory, which is now part of PCS. Friends, let's welcome him to the Hill Chance of
Hello everyone, is it working now? I guess. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Professor Sen, for the introduction and thank you, Insel, for uh, getting me here. It's really a very different feeling to stand in the same auditorium where I was on the other side a few years ago. And uh, today I'm here, I just have to share one message uh, with all of you. And I hope that at the end of my session, if, if we are able to come out with this message, uh, I think I would have done my job. So yeah, um, the key message today that I have to share with you is, it's okay to fail. Yeah, so the guy standing in front of you, I in class 4 I failed in mathematics. Then at the age of 17 I failed in clearing IIT in my first attempt. 21 failed in clearing IIMs. At the age of 26 I started my uh, first venture uh, after quitting CAS, which is where I got placed from XLR. And yeah, that was a total failure as well. Then I thought I'd start another company in Huawei and that too uh, failed, but uh, we did some good job there. So yeah, so you see, uh, since the time I was born, till not so far ago, it seems to be a life of failures, isn't it? So the only conclusion to draw is, guy here perhaps is a born loser. But maybe there is a different way to look at it. Yeah, so the first failure uh, in mathematics uh, helped me understand that maths doesn't seem to be a very simple problem. You've got to be careful with this subject. So yeah, I got that learning pretty early and by the time I was in class 10, I was able to clear the maths Olympiad. But it wasn't easy. At the age of 18, so IIT was just uh, a complete ego buster for me. I, I wanted to clear it and that's why I thought that maybe I should have a second track at it. So I did have a second track at it and I cleared it but with a very pathetic rank so I didn't join it. I went to the IIT Mr. instead. Uh, so yeah, that was the second learning. Then third was, uh, so there's a small story. So after my engineering I joined TCS and uh, every time I would go to cafeteria, you know, uh, everyone around would just say that my boss is so bad or, or my company is so bad. And I would always wonder that why is it why is it so that these guys are so unhappy? At the same time, I would then wonder why are they still here? I don't see any change around them. So what makes them be still work with this company? And that kind of put that thought that maybe it's important to understand uh, how to keep people happy. So I'm in fact a PMI graduate from this institution and really those two years help me understand uh, what it takes, what are the motivators to keep people happy. And I have really experimented with my own ventures in trying to apply some of those learnings which I learned at next year. Right? Then, yeah, so the first company I, I talked about, uh, New Railway Consultancy, in fact, uh, Dr. Sareen was one of the advisors in that company as well. And uh, we launched the world's only branded desire, that is called Tata FE. However, uh, after about one and a half years of that business, uh, I just realized that uh, service business is not that easy to scale. I, I was unable to see how in three to five years time I can create a 100 crore company out of that particular business model. So we were making money, I signed a term sheet with the Indian investor, but then we decided as a team to not really uh, push that forward. So, so that was a big learning, uh, how to really build a product business and why a service business is not scaled. Then yeah, uh, from there I moved to the bomb. I was the sixth person to join the bomb. A very small team at that time and uh, was able to scale that to about 600 people when I left. And then same story with Amazon. I was heading the retail marketing when I left Amazon. Uh, I was the second person to join. We had a small business center at Bangalore uh, and from there we have really, really grown. So yeah, the learning that we had there was it is important to use technology for problem solving. And really, uh, I had the good luck to meet Jeff Bezos a couple of times in Seattle. And if you see, uh, if you meet that person, you'll realize that how passionate uh, you know one could be in adopting technology. So, the reason why Amazon never makes profit is because the moment they start making money, they put on some other project. 
So they will start investing in Kindle. Five years before anyone else, else has even thought about that. Or they will start putting money in cloud services. So really, some real life problems and how you can effectively use technology. So I work with both Tata Group and Amazon. I give this example a lot of times. Uh, in terms of revenues, any guesses about Amazon revenues? In billion dollars? Any? Just a guess. Sorry? 15 billion dollars? Yeah, anyone else? Sorry? Yeah, that is true. Uh, so yeah, it is close to 100 billion dollars. Uh, any guesses about Tata Group revenue? That should be everyone should get Sorry? Yes. So I think very close to each other in terms of Tata Group and Amazon. Uh, but then, uh, when was Amazon started? About 1994, right? About 20 years. When was Tata Group started? Sorry? 100 plus years. Uh, Amazon about 20 years. So, so. At the same time, how many people are there in Tata Group? Any guesses? Yeah, close to 8 lakhs, I think. Half of them in TCS, of course. Uh, and how many in Amazon? I guess when I left about a year ago, it was some 17 or so. Uh, so you see, one-tenth the number of people, and maybe one-fifth the amount of time, they are pretty much there. And that's the power of technology, uh, which helps you scale, right? Uh, so, so a lot of learnings there, and I think that's why can we go back? So yeah, so while the graph may look like this uh, to a lot of people, including me, but I firmly believe that. It's been a graph like this, where every failure has helped me learn something different and new. Yeah. So yeah, what am I doing currently? Uh, so after all, lot of these learnings, I've started this venture called Medinfi Healthcare. Uh, all we do is help people find the right doctors and hospitals for their needs. Uh, we don't do book, book appointments, we don't have home therapy, we don't have any healthcare service to offer. All we offer is a trip advisor kind of service where you can go and find out which doctor is the right doctor for the needs. Our current team size is about 20 people. Uh, we are available as a mobile app on Android in Bangalore, Delhi and Mumbai. Uh, yeah, I was lucky to raise some money from uh, Angel investors so far in about three rounds of funding. So how have I used my learning, uh, which I initially talked about? So yeah, I, I figured out maths is complex uh, but fun. So I have uh, someone from housing here. I'm pretty sure they have raised a lot more funding and pretty sure they have signed a lot of term sheets. Uh, but what was interesting is for all my rounds of funding, I was I didn't really hire a chartered accountant. Because of that experience, I was able to manage all the financial modeling on my own. Uh, all valuation discussions, DCF models, pretty much infinitely and save some cost for the company. Second was, uh, in fact, the biggest learning was XLRI. Uh, all my ventures, the previous one and this one, um, you know, this term is there in industry called Excel Mafia. And I've really seen it work uh, because I will show you who are the investors and you will be surprised. Uh, but yeah, whether it is my team or the set of angel investors, uh, it's been Excel all the way. Uh, apart from, of course, the learning in terms of how do you really handle people. So that was next. Uh, third was what I already talked about, service versus product. So my first company was a purely service model. And I, I saw it very early that this is not going to scale. And then with the experience I had at the Gong and Amazon, I think product is the right model to, uh, to scale. In our case, currently, it's a mobile application that we have to offer. Finally, uh, if you see the first slide, it was I started a social venture also called Alive In fact. I was uh, very uh, actively involved. I was secretary for Sigma uh, when I was here. I was instrumental in setting that team at XLRI, and that was my interest area in terms of. I had these sessions. I got a good at the campus, in which we have to campus. I was very active at that time. But then very soon I realized that uh, you see, uh, social enterprises, good intentions don't work. Another learning from Jeff Bezos that good intentions don't work. You got to make it profitable, and you got to make it sustainable. So yeah, some people like Kumar and Ambit have really shown us the way in terms of how to create a sustainable uh, business venture which is having a direct impact on society. 
that was my learning too. Uh, so yeah, that's how I'm using uh, in the current function. So yes, Dr. Kasani, uh, basically I was talking about the Excel Mafia. These are first angel investors. Uh, in fact, uh, another similarity with housing.com is the angel investor for housing was Harish Chavar, uh, who is the co-founder of India Value Fund. And other co-founder has invested in our company called Medicare Healthcare. Uh, that is Sunil. Uh, then Vijay is a close friend. He runs a company called Goja Watch, uh, where MD has recently invested about 300 crores. Uh, Pradeep uh, is actually RMA and uh, he sets up cancer hospitals across India. Uh, so he is one of our board of directors and of course our own Dr. Kakani. Uh, he has invested in all the three rounds of funding and he also sets on our board of directors. So yeah, we've been very lucky uh, for the support of these people. So how has it been, it been so far? Uh, we have been chosen by Facebook and both their bootstrap program uh, where they offer some free resources as well as in their social good program uh, where they present some few startups across the globe uh, where they help them in fundraising and, and mentoring. Uh, we are in the top 20 global, global mobile innovators uh, uh, which, which happens in various countries. Uh, this is our third edition and we were there. We were also in the top 100 digital health startups uh, by Interface Health Excellence in Canada. Uh, and finally, uh, this was long back in Feb, uh, where we were in the Times Internet Batch List program. Which, which we turned on, uh, there are problems in money. So yeah, uh, I have talked about my failures and the learnings, but uh, just one point I wanted to say was, of course it's not just me. What happens is every time in sessions like this, you will have a lot of people come up and talk to you and, and maybe you will feel that, hey, you know, uh, these guys are different, they are very lucky or you know, maybe something different than what I am. The only point I am trying to make is, that is not the case. Every success except maybe very few people has had a lot of failures behind it and a lot of hard work behind it. Which is the point I am trying to make that basically I was you and all you can be here. Uh, it is just a matter of failing and trying, failing and trying again. And yeah, it's not just me, so just go step by step. Yeah. So who is this uh, person? His first company, Trapo Data, was meant to create reports for roadway engineers from raw traffic data and the business was a total failure. Any guesses? Anyone? Take a wild guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah maybe the world's richest person, Mr. Gates. So his first company was a failure as well. Okay. Who is this guy? He didn't speak until he was 4 and didn't read until he was 7. He was subsequently expelled from school and was not admitted to the Zurich Polytechnic. Yeah, great. But the guy couldn't even speak, man. Yeah, next. Is this all of you would know, I guess. Yeah, he was a train ticket examiner at Kharagpur Station for 2 years. Uh, in West Bengal, our own cricket team then. Yeah. Who is this guy? In early life, he was rejected for his voice, gangly height, and not having a camera conducive face. Late diagnosed with Misthenia Brevis, which sent him into a pessimistic state of mind, and had several years and walked. Yeah. So, it's not just me, it's, it's all of these guys and, and there are lots, I'm pretty sure even the gentlemen here uh, would have had their own share of failures before they had their success. So yeah guys, uh, so that's basically the crux of what I had to share with all of you today. That this got to fail, it's okay if you fail, you will learn something. If, you, if that's not enough to take you to success, then fail again and you will learn again. But despite this cycle, no one is going to guarantee you success. Success may happen or may not happen. But one thing that will definitely happen is learning. And that is going to help you in, in succeeding. So that's that's all I have to uh, share with all of you. Love to fail and love to love. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Ravi, for sharing your experiences with us. Uh, I would now like to invite Mr. Sharad Kumar, who is the co-founder and director at FashionOpera.com. Um, Sharad has had his PG degree from MIGA in Dabar, and he then worked as an online marketing analyst with Denmark's Education, and then as a digital marketing manager with Lux Industries Limited, before he started FashionOpera. He's worked across all the verticals of an online business, which are product design and development, marketing, advertising, e-commerce sales and operation. So he's got a fairly diverse experience. And Fashno has recently received funding from KKR Spearhead Bowler Umesh Yadav. So that's an interesting piece of trivia. And Sharad will be the next one to share his experience. And you get it with your recently married, 
and you are leaving your job, like a well-paying job, and on the basis of a business model, this doesn't pay you for like at least for one to two years. Like you at least, you know, it's a basically you are an aggregator. Fashion is works with the aggregator team. Anyway, so we started Fashion Now. Uh, we started uh, on a very uh, down level. And uh, what Fashion Now does is that uh, we are very uh, layman's term. We are like Zomato for fashion. So what we are trying to do is, we are organizing the unorganized fashion retail. In a very, in one line I can describe what Fashion Now is trying to do. And uh, basically, you know, in India we have a lot of home-based boutiques and tailors. So it, it basically will actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, is catered to or targeted to females because as a female, you you know, you, you might be staying in a locality, but you don't know, uh, you know, if you require, let's say, a Langa <coughs> or a Sari, or let's say, you require some stitching job to be done. You don't know where exactly to go to. Plus, even if you know, uh, you don't know, uh, you know, if that person will be able to do the stitching or. Uh, you know, any kind of manipulation to the product in a proper way or what will be the pricing of that particular thing. So, this problem we are trying to actually solve by the platform called Fashion Now. Uh, we currently have in Calcutta about in 1,000 store registered and uh, we recently launched in Bombay with uh, 800 plus data uh, fashion stores. When I say fashion stores, we actually don't uh, focus more on the organized sector because it's already discoverable pretty easily on platform like the sell or something. But still, uh, every time I pitch to investors, they ask each other how we different uh, than the sell. So I say this thing to them that the sell helps you discover them, but it doesn't help you pick up which one to go. So fashion actually helps you in this, you know, we are, we are a niche fashion portal. So we actually help you in knowing which place to go and which place to visit. Yeah. So as I said, we are a young startup. We started uh, one and a half year back. Uh, our main, like we launched our beta portal uh, in January this year, uh, but our main uh, website got live in August only. And uh, fortunately, we, we got our first uh, round of funding from Mr. Mahesh Adar. Uh, and trust me, before Mahesh, I have actually pitched to more than 15 investors for my funding thing. It never happened. And Mahesh funding happened just by pure luck. He didn't ask for anything. He just was fascinated by the idea and the willingness that the people had, and the dedication that the people had, and the way we were actually working as a city like Alcata. Very difficult market to actually capture. And, uh, we were fortunate enough and uh, with the help of that we have actually uh, stayed a business of it. We are, uh, as I said, moving to Mumbai now. Uh, these are the three few milestones from the many milestones that I think, but these are the three main uh, milestones which uh, I would like to focus upon. Uh, we recently launched a mobile app, 45 days back, and we have got 3,000 plus app downloads. Uh, the best part is that it's all organic, so which actually has proved that uh, you know, there was need. And 95% uh, are women. So again, so it, it's actually proving that women actually are willing to. Uh, I'm talking about downloads. I'm not. Uh, uh, I forgot to mention about the retention. It's more than sixty-two percent. So uh, the people, if, uh, you know, who belong to this field, they know that you know after every one month, the retention rate goes under forty percent. So I think it's pretty good. And yeah, we are free angel because we are still waiting for the angel round, and that's why it's free angel. So that's pretty much about what Fashion Now is and uh, you can easily find it on the Play Store and uh, we are on the web also. And uh, we are very good quality, high tech, technical team and uh, we work very capably. So you will find it on our portal also, you can check our app, it's very good. That's pretty much you can just find it. So uh, majorly, uh, the reason I came, agreed to came up here, I was like, really fascinated because uh, I love to speak in front of people who are in college because it's like the, probably the best time you can start up. Like, you know, because you have good time, uh, good people to interact with, and uh, good professors with whom you can actually discuss your idea. So it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant opportunity actually. So that's why I wanted to come up and discuss it with you. So the, uh, the idea is that when it comes to entrepreneurship, should I or should I die? I mean, I'm standing in front of these, I probably should talk to me about should I, but. Uh, Trust me, you should also question that should I start up or shouldn't I? Okay. So, or even if I show it, then is it good for me or I mean I don't know. Like when I was in college, I did my uh, post back from uh, the School of Communications and the last. You know, we were Micah. Like, uh, I don't know how many people you know. It's like a place where you know the general concept is that people party a lot. So we did. I mean, we partied a lot. Okay. So today we, you know. 
and the hindsight may think that I still think that probably I should have actually gone and my startup. Okay, instead of just fighting on it. Which is true. I'm not saying I didn't learn anything out of that fighting culture. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the last time doesn't come back. So this is one of the examples. And uh, if you are planning to uh, start up something, you know, I would just want to focus upon one thing, that doing the regular high-paying job is not bad. You know, it actually is a good thing. 98% uh, of my friends are doing a normal job and they're happy. Uh, that's because I'm, before my time, I'm a DC graduate, uh, very well of him. And uh, trust me, 98% of my friends are actually working. They're working for good com really good companies, earning big bucks. Most of them are not even in India, they are going abroad, they have settled abroad. Uh, my uh, micro friends are, they, you know, on Friday night, they always send me messages that uh, they are having this party. On Saturday, Sunday, you'll see their Facebook updates or something. They are traveling some places or, you know, they are having a lot of fun. So, it's actually not bad. Like, what, what have I done? Like, you know, I've upset my parents, my family. I still say lies to them that I'm doing this or that. They don't understand what my business is. Okay. So, why to bother, you know, money is there, party, holidays, trips abroad, happy parents, happy family, I have to, seriously, my analogy asked me, my, uh, you know, what should I do? What are you doing? I was like, I don't explain it. I mean, it's, it's impossible. I said, how much money is there? No, it's not. One year, it's not. Have you done a single penny last year? So, what are you trying to do? So, how are you surviving? Naraji, uh, my wife works for idea, so to skip I said to Seriously, my wife was, I've been living on money so because she believes that I can doing something nice for her. Anyway, so I don't believe in that. If you believe in something that you can do in the best possible way, I think you should start. If you want to do something desperately, if you think that, you know, this is something that I think I can... If you read few your three articles and have been temporarily inspired, you know, your story is, trust me, all the stories, they are real culprits, you know. Every day I see 10 stories coming up, they have become successful or they have raised so much of money. You know, actually it's a headache. Because every day we come to our office, we have it raised every damn time. And then you read, where are these two coming up from? How can we carry each other? Seriously, what are, where are we going on? So actually it's a lot of headache. So plus people get inspired, I have read so many stories. So inspiration is good, but then you need to keep a track on actually what you are trying to do. You know, <clears throat> so you should start up if everyone around you is starting up. So I've seen this culture coming up in Delhi especially, not in Calcutta, Calcutta is well, it was a backward and starting up there. I'm not saying it's backward, it's actually...